Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about units of measurement. And units of measurement are highly important, not just in chemistry, but in all sciences that use quantitative reasoning. To further demonstrate the importance of units of measurement, I'd like to bring to your attention this image right here. This is an artist's rendition of the Mars Climate Orbiter, uh, which was a $125 million project from NASA. And this thing was designed to orbit the planet Mars and take readings of the weather on Mars. And one day, the Mars Climate Orbiter went way too low into the Martian atmosphere and actually burnt up. And the reason why this happened is because two engineers that were working on this project failed to communicate the units that they were using in their calculations. So because of this seemingly trivial mistake, uh, the $125 million that went into the Mars Climate Orbiter might as well be burnt up just like the orbiter itself. So obviously, units of measurement are very important. And it's very important that we are consistent with our units when we're doing calculations. So I'd like to switch gears a little bit and start talking about some of the unit systems, starting with the English system of units. So the English system of units is, uh, is used uh, only in the US, uh, which is where I'm from. And it has units such as inches, gallons, ounces, etc. cetera. Uh, and then there's the much more superior metric system, at least in my opinion. Uh, and it's used everywhere else in the world. And under the metric system, we have units such as meters, grams, liters, and many, many more. And the reason why the metric system, in my opinion, is, is, is so much better is because it's much easier to use. The nice thing about the metric system is that it's based on the number 10, which is the number on which our numerical system is based. So when you're doing metric calculations, oftentimes you're just multiplying or dividing by powers of 10, and that's as easy as just moving that decimal point around. Uh, in contrast, when you're using the English system, uh, for instance, if you're trying to go from inches to miles, you have to say, okay, well, there are 12 inches in a foot, and then there are 5,280 feet in a mile, uh, and, and, and you basically have to, you, to uh, conduct these very uh, convoluted and unnecessarily complicated uh, calculations. So I think this is why the metric system is the basis for what's called the International System of Units, uh, abbreviated SI. So the International System of Units, like I said, it's based on the metric system, and this is the system that is used by scientists. So in the next few slides, I'm going to, to uh, go over uh, a few different SI units and the origin of those units, and uh, let's see if we can't uh, learn something along the way. So I'm going to first uh, start with the meter. So the meter is the SI unit for length, and the interesting thing about the meter is that it has an old definition and a new definition. Uh, the old definition of the meter is uh, one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole through Paris. And nowadays, the meter is more precisely defined. Uh, currently, the meter is defined as the distance that light travels through a vacuum in one out of 299 million, uh, 792,458 seconds. So that's a pretty precise definition of, of the meter. Uh, the next SI unit that I'm going to talk about is the kilogram. And the kilogram is the SI unit for mass. And mass is basically just the amount of matter that's in an object. So a lot of people get mass confused with weight, but they're, very, they're, they're quite different from one another. And the difference between mass and weight is that mass is independent of gravitational field. So if you weigh 100 kilograms on Earth, or excuse me, if you have a mass of 100 kilograms on Earth, that mass is going to be 100 kilograms regardless of if you were on the moon, if you were in space, you would still have that same mass. It's independent of gravitational field. Weight, on the other hand, actually depends on gravity. So if, you're, if you weigh 100 kilograms uh, on uh, the planet Earth, then your moon weight is actually going to be lighter uh, because there's less of a gravitational field there. So the definition of the kilogram is the mass of a metal cylinder, which is kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Sevres, France. So that's a pretty uh, arbitrary definition for a unit, but nevertheless, that's what it is. Now I'm going to talk about the second. And the second is the SI unit for time. And just like the meter, uh, the second has an older definition and a more modern definition. So the old uh, definition of the second was defined in terms of the day and the year. Um, but this is bad because the day and the year are pretty imprecise. 
So in other words, the, uh, the world does not necessarily take the exact same amount of time to rotate around its axis every day. It's roughly 24 hours, but it's, it's, there's a little bit of change left over. It's not the exact same amount of time every single time. Same thing with the year. The world does not take the exact same amount of time to revolve around the sun every year. It's roughly 365 days, but there's a little bit left over. It's, it's not exactly that much. So the current and more precise definition of the second is the duration of, here we go, 9,192,631,770 periods of radiation emitted by a certain electronic transition in a cesium-133 atom. So, wow, what does all that mean? Well, starting with electronic transitions, uh, when we get into the, quant uh, excuse me, the quantum mechanical model of the atom, uh, we'll, we will start seeing that uh, electrons that are uh, within atoms can change their energy levels. And when an electron goes from a high energy level to a lower energy level, this is accompanied by an emission of radiation. And radiation uh, behaves like waves. So when I say this many periods of radiation, well, the period of a wave is actually the distance uh, that the wave takes to complete one complete cycle. So in this case here on this graph uh, on the right side of your screen, the period of this uh, wave would be the distance from A all the way to E. And this large number of periods of radiation uh, emitted by this transition corresponds to exactly one second. So the next SI unit that I'm going to be talking about is the Kelvin. And the Kelvin is the SI unit for temperature. So when I say temperature, I'm talking about a, a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules within the sample. So if object A has a higher temperature than object B, then you can say that the molecules on average in object A are moving around faster than they are in B. And uh, the definition of the Kelvin is uh, one out of 273.16, the temperature of the triple point of water. So what the heck is the triple point of water? Well, here on the right side of your screen, I have what's called a phase diagram for water. And a phase diagram shows uh, the state of matter in which water exists at various combinations of temperature and pressure. So on the x-axis here, we have temperature, and on the y-axis, we have pressure. And uh, so, for instance, if I had a temperature of about 300 Kelvin, so that's maybe right here, I'm just eyeballing it. So if I had a temperature of about 300 Kelvins and a pressure of about one atmosphere, that's what this ATM stands for is atmospheres, then I would be right here and I would have liquid water. So the interesting thing about water's phase diagram is that uh, there is a point on water's on, on the phase diagram, a certain temperature and pressure at which water can theoretically exist as a solid, a liquid, or in the vapor state. So this is what we call the triple point of water, and it is that point on which the Kelvin is defined. So uh, the next and last uh, SI unit that I'm going to be talking about is the mole. And a mole is the SI unit for amount of a substance. And the definition of the mole is the number of atoms in a 12 gram sample of carbon 12. So that number turns out to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if you have a mole of anything, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. A mole of pennies would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pennies. A mole of eggs would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs, and so on and so forth. And obviously, this is a very, very large number. Why are we using such a large number? Well, the main reason is why is because uh, when we're working in a lab, we, we want to work with you know relatively tangible quantities of things. We don't want to count atoms in the lab because we'd be working with such large numbers. So by multiplying everything by this large number, it kind of makes the numbers you know the calculations a little bit uh, a little bit tamer. So um, a, mole, a mole of water would be. 6.022 times 10 to the uh, 23rd water molecules, and that turns out to be um, about 18 or so, roughly 18 milliliters of water. So the amount of water in this graduated cylinder here 
this is about a mole of water. So that's the mole and uh, there's SI units for you and I hope this video helped you out a little bit and uh, alright, have a good one.